Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at an add-on which solves some of the most annoying problems with Blender. Before we start, this video has been inspired by the fact that Blender Marketplace is having a sale. It's running from Monday the 13th until Friday the 17th of February 2023, and hopefully you're watching this in time to be able to take advantage of that. I've got in the description some links to my top picks for Blender add-ons that I just couldn't do without, and one of them is the add-on construction lines, and that's what we're going to focus on today. If you're watching this on Patreon, you've got a little bit of advance notice of that, because the videos on Patreon come up a little bit early, so if you're interested in getting my video earlier without the ads and some additional things on top of that, do check on the Patreon link in the description. Okay, hold up. Don't turn off. I know this isn't Blender. Let me just give you some background. This is SketchUp. This is what I started learning to do 3D design on, and it is a very different sort of program to Blender. It's based on you constructing shapes from nothing, whereas Blender typically involves you bringing in shapes and then modifying them, and it's typically used for architecture, which means that it's very good at giving very precise measurements. It has also got some really nice features where you can actually edit this architecture really, really quickly, and you don't have issues with non-manifold edges. It generally does a bit of a better job job of them than Blender does in many ways, but it's also hideously bad at dealing with things like curved and rounded shapes, and it misses out a lot of the features of Blender. There's a reason why I use Blender now, but that's where I started. So if you're like me and you started with SketchUp, there are some features that you might really wish that were in Blender, and even if you didn't start with SketchUp, hopefully after this video, you'll also realise there's some features you wish were in Blender, and thankfully, you can get them in Blender, thanks to this add-on, Construction Lines. Now this is a paid for add-on, it's not very much, I think it's like $11. When I actually got it, it was $7 because they keep adding more to it and obviously that keeps putting up the price. So if you want a good investment, I would say this is a pretty solid one for your workflow. So let me talk you through some of the things you can do with this. I'm not gonna talk through everything. I'm just gonna talk through the things that I think are really cool. And I'll start with some relatively basic stuff and go through things that I think are more and more impressive as we go along. But I think most of them you should realize have got a really good place in most hard surface modeling workflows. So when you click construction lines, it effectively changes your interface to be a little bit more sort of partially see-through. You can see all the different lines on it and you get these things at the bottom, which are all your different options and tools you can use. And all you do is you can just click out of it at any point just by going onto something else. It does work in different ways, depending on if you are in object mode or you're in editing mode. And you'll notice that you have had that disappear at the top, it just says construction lines. And a lot of information or things that you're typing in are gonna be in this top left-hand corner. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that. Now you've got a variety of tools, select and so on. A really fun thing about the select tool is that it allows you to select things quite easily. Let's just actually grab this and I'm going to just do something like that and then grab another one like that. Anyway, I'll talk about those shortcuts in a second. What the selection box or the selection tool does, which normal Blender doesn't, I don't think, is if you select from the left and go to the right, you'll notice that it will select only the things that are fully enclosed between it. So for example, if I go there, I'm only enclosing two of the boxes or two of the cubes and not the third. Whereas if you come from the right and go to the left, it will select anything that it touches. Pretty fun, I like that. And there are various other things, for example, drawing lines, drawing rectangles, circles, arcs, all of these really cool things. Arcs are especially fun, where you can sort of click somewhere, click somewhere else, and then you can control your arc to give it a certain amount and you can hold control and then add to the number of segments there are. And you'll notice that is in the top left hand corner, as I said. So there's a lot of these really fun things that you can do and it'll just create an arc. And for example, if you use the draw line, what's really cool about this is if you just do from one point to another, it automatically fills in faces and things like that. So there's a lot of really cool options you could do, especially if you go into like top down view and you want to start something new, where you can let's say draw something and you'll notice it will color code itself to the axes that it's going in. And you can just type in a distance, for example, I could type in one. Now this is important. You do have to type it on your normal keyboard, not your number pad, otherwise it changes the view. And then you can just carry on drawing. So for example, again, one there, and then I could do one again there. And you can make this really cool, let's do two there sort of shapes, and if I wanted to, I could then go to, let's say, the arc and click on there, click on there, and do some sort of shape. Let's do 0.5. So lots of really quick things you can do, and you just get out of that by pressing tab. Let's just delete those. 
So that's some basic stuff. Let's talk about edit mode first, actually, because I think it's got some things that are really useful and that drawing can be done by a number of other programs. So let's go into edit mode and to do that, you just hit tab and you get this gray box to show you what you're doing. And you'll notice that straight away, you've got the ability to select edges. And for example, you can move them around or you've got vertices and again you can move them around or you can select whole faces and again you can move them around and just like normal blender you can lock to let's say the z-axis and move in the z-axis so yeah all the standard stuff but where this gets a bit more interesting is you also have the ability to draw things on these faces much like you would do in SketchUp for example I could select a rectangle and I could just go here and draw a rectangle and that is going to draw a rectangle onto that face and it is going to become, if I go into select, its own face. And I could use the extrude tool and select that and extrude it all the way through and no faffing around, no non-manifold edges, it's cut it all through. So yeah, really helpful, or at least I think it's really useful. Now the other thing that's really cool about this is that it snaps really nicely. In fact, let's use the rectangle tool for this. So we've got snapping on each of the corners and you also get a snap halfway through on any edge. So you'll notice it turns from a blue dot which shows you're on edge to a purple dot which shows you are perfectly centered. So for example, I could do something like there and I know that is exactly halfway. And then I could, let's say, extrude that down all the way. And then I could do the same thing if I wanted to. I could go to, let's say, there. And again, I could extrude all the way through. Or you can also do it with the line tool. There to there and click and it automatically cuts the faces. It's basically like the knife tool, but better because you don't have to keep selecting a new knife tool each time and then extrude all the way through or extrude part of the way through, whatever. I mean, you can do things like this with box cutter, but I think you'll probably agree that even with box cutter, that would take longer, like notably longer. And yeah, you can even do things on angles. So for example, I could do something there and then again extrude and I could select that and maybe extrude only 0.5 down. So I'm just typing that in. You can see in the top left hand corner and I've got that there. And just to tab out of this, just to make sure that we're aware of this, if I come to N and where are we? And I go to 3D print toolbox and check all, it's got no issues. It's manifold with no problems in any way, shape or form. Now, obviously that's quite nice. Is it worth $11 by itself? Yeah, maybe. But this is where we start getting really fun. So I'm going to come back into construction lines and we're going to make a copy of this. Now, obviously we could do this in Blender normally, but we're just going to do it in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is come to the grab or the move. You can also just press G to do that. I'm going to select here, click to start moving it. And then if you press control, it makes a copy and it will lock to different axes and you've got your copy. So just duplication, but a little bit faster. But this is where things get very fun. Normally in Blender, we are very obsessed with the origins of objects. It is sort of determining everything in the cursor. It's how we snap things to other places. And without it, it becomes a bit of a pain. For example, if I go into normal box cutter, so I'm going to come out of construction lines and I'm going to select this. And let's say I want to snap this to, I don't know, somewhere on this object. I can do that. I've got my snapping on here. I've got it to vertex. So I could just, let's say G and then X and it snapped to that X, but it's gone this face to this face. Okay, maybe I want this face going to over here. So let's try G and X again. That's sort of worked, but now I want it at the top. So G and Z, no, that's gone down instead of up. It's just not very good at selecting specific things that you want. Same thing with rotation. If I press R and Z, I have to rotate it around, well, its origin. I can't just rotate anywhere. Go back into construction lines. Let's start looking with the rotate tool first. So I'm gonna to go to the rotate tool. I don't know why it's got O as the shortcut, but let's say I don't want to rotate it from there. So I want to rotate it from the bottom corner. What you do is you just click and then I want to rotate it around the y-axis. So green for y-axis and I'm gonna click there and now I can rotate it around that point and I can still type in something like 90 and it's rotated it around that corner instead of rotating it well, wherever it was gonna rotate around the origin. 
if you're just using normal Blender. Again, it's just so much faster than having to move things around like the Origin. The other thing that it can do, and I'm gonna be honest, this is the thing that actually made me buy this by itself. I bought it for this because I think snapping in Blender is absolutely crap and it needs to get better. And well, this does this much better. Whenever you go to an object, and you'll notice whenever you're hovering over an object to show that you're going to select it or do something with it, it brings the origin up. You'll notice, as I said, it will snap to various different points, like each corner. And wherever your mouse is or wherever it's snapped to, if you click on that when you start your move, that's where it's going to move it from and then it will snap to whatever you're moving it to. So for example moving it from that corner to that corner just took no time. Or if I want that corner to that corner it just takes no time. Or if I want the middle of this it turned purple. Let's do that again just so you can see it. It goes purple to snap to the middle of an edge and then I go and put it on that corner. And everything is exact. Like it's perfect. So this suddenly makes moving things a much nicer thing to have to do. You don't have all of these issues that you do with standard Blender. It's everything becomes just an easier place to work. Now where this gets even cooler is that it's got a measuring tool. If you press T or come down here, okay, I think it's like tape measure, you can start measuring things out. For example, let's uh, want to move from this corner. Again, it snaps and I want to go upwards. So I'm gonna press Z and I wanna go upwards let's say 0 0.5, and I've got my measurement. Now, you'll already notice that if, let's say I go from this corner to this corner, it's a hell of a lot nicer than the standard Blender measuring tool, which is over here and is awful. I mean, it works, but it's hideous. Whereas this is much easier to use, but more importantly, if I come back to my move tool, it also acts as a snapping point. So I can move that so it's exactly 0 0.5 up, or I can move halfway to 0 0.5 up. And again, you could do this with Blender. You could have gone through all the pain of moving all the origins around and snapping to various corners and then pressing G and Z and 0 0.5, but it just isn't as quick. It's just not as fast as that. It doesn't have this visual representation that's constantly there and really nice. It's just worse. And you can still do all of the standard things that you could do in Blender. For example, I could move this to there and then I could move it along, press, let's say X, to lock it to the x-axis, and then I could just type in, let's say, one and enter, and it still does all the standard things that you could do. So, I mean, to me, this is quality of life changes, fantastic, and if you ever want to, you can just select your guide, press X, and it deletes it. So you don't even need to leave things permanently there. Now this final thing you can do, admittedly, when I bought construction lines, it didn't do this, and it was one of the things that in SketchUp is really helpful for precision and I just felt was missing from this and it's now here and it's fantastic. And it's this. Let's say we want to move this again. So I'm going to go to move. And again, we've got our ability to select where we're moving from and to using that snapping. So let's say I just want to move this along, let's say sideways. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click X to lock it to the X axis. Now if you press control, what that does is that basically makes a duplicate. So now you've got a duplicate of our original and our new one. And you can do the standard thing of, let's say I'm gonna go this two along. So type two, hit enter, and it's made another one. In fact, actually that looks a bit rubbish. Let's do it a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna X control, and then let's move it along three. Now, as long as I haven't clicked anything, I can now just type in a number like four, and it's gonna have done it four times each of exactly the same distance from the other one. I mean, basically an array, but it's not gonna take me the time to go through, say I want to confirm it and things like that. Now, that's quite nice, but it's not as good as this. If I do exactly the same thing, but this time I have a distance that I want to do it. In fact, let me just set something up so that we can demonstrate this. Okay, so say this is a very rudimentary battlement. This is what we're going to be making as a battlement. And I want my additional bits, my rampart, the crenulations on top of my tower or my wall. Now, construction lines has a function that's very similar to what I just did if I go to the move tool. If you remember, I said you could select with control and then move it along. And you'll notice this is really nice because I'm not even having to press X because it's snapping along the edge. And then I could do something like that and type in, let's say six, and it's gonna make six copies. And that copy has added one on each time. It's gone, well, there's one, and then we're gonna go the same distance again, two, three, four, 
five, six, because I just typed in six after I did the movement. It also has this feature, and this is really cool. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to that corner, click it, control, and then I'm gonna go to the other corner. So you'll notice this is exactly on that corner. Now I haven't clicked anything at this point, that's important, but we want, well, a total of nine, one plus eight more. But we don't want to have this going further. We want this putting them between these two shapes. So effectively we want to divide this distance by eight. So divide, you can see that in the top left hand corner, by eight, hit enter, and it's done it. Basically like an array, but in reverse. I did the total move and then divided it up. And, I mean, this is perfect. I haven't had to do any maths to work everything out. They are just perfectly there. Now, I don't know why Blender's Array doesn't have functions like this, because it's so potentially useful to be able to do it this way. But you don't need to. It comes with construction lines. If you are interested in construction lines, there is a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. It's going to cost you no extra, but it gives a little money towards the channel. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, maybe you'd like to see some more worked examples using construction lines, or you'd just like to see other add-ons, or maybe you've got an add-on I've never covered that you think is absolutely amazing and is something that I should check out, put it in the comments section. I'm always really happy to try new things out, and I find it really interesting. Hopefully that was nice and informative, and I hope you have a great day.